What's up, folks? So I finally got some time to go through all of my gear from this last Idaho elk hunt, and I thought it'd be a great time to sit down with you and show you what I carry on an elk hunt. I'm literally gonna go out to my truck right now, grab my pack, dust it off. It's probably gonna take actually like an air compressor. The thing is just incredibly dirty from this trip, but I'm gonna dust it off, burst that pack open and walk through every item that's in there for you. I want you guys to think about this video not as just a list of things to go out and buy. I want you to view it as a framework. Everything in that pack I've carried on dozens and dozens of hunts. If it wasn't worth carrying or I didn't use it, I got rid of it. I'm not the type of guy that wants to carry a bunch of extra shit in the mountains. So use this as a framework when you go out and put your own elk hunting gear list together. I hope you guys enjoy it and get some value from it. Let's go. All right guys, so let's jump right in here. So this is exactly how I left the pack after our last hunt, okay? So you can see how I was carrying the rifle down the mountain in the dark, right down the dead center. And then here I just stuck these trekking poles on here uh, before I threw it in the back of the side by side. I've now gone to uh, two poles. These are just the Cascade trekking poles that you can get at Costco. You can get them on uh, Amazon, I believe also now. And then this is the quick sticks adapter. I use to hold them together. So that's my trekking pole set up. I have a little paracord actually. I just la threw it on the outside. I usually keep this inside my pack. This is great for an alternative to game bags. If you're just hanging up meat on a day hunt, you're gonna come right back in. You can get away without carrying game bags with it. I use it for a whole lot of different things. I actually have it on the outside of my pack here because what we were doing is we were actually taking a pack raft. We were crossing a river and then we were stringing a pack raft back uh, back to the other guy so he could cross and we needed a little more rope. So that's why I have that uh, paracord on the outside. That's just 550 cord. Uh, that's the, the best stuff is to actually try to find the 550 cord. It holds up, it's a little more expensive. We're talking like a few dollars guys to just have the right kind of stuff. I always just burn the ends just so I don't have the little frays all over the place and the sheath of this starting to peel off. So make sure you do that. It keeps things kind of tidy in your pack. Let's uh, work from the outside in here. So I have my little outside pack. This is great for securing stuff uh, to the pack like the rifle. Um, there's different configurations you can go. Uh, this is the Kufaru's little little pack. This is called the Sherman, I believe, um, but lots of different variations out there. So on the outside, what I carry is I always have my inReach in the outside pocket. This is an inReach mini. The other thing I'll do is I'll stick in some small snacks sometimes. In the bigger pocket here of this outside packet, I have my uh, quick clip adapter for my my trekking poles, right? So that goes with the quick sticks adapter. This isn't something I've used a whole lot, but I'm starting to carry it. If I were to have to take a shot over brush, to me, it makes sense to carry this. It's super light. And as you'll see, I'm actually still carrying my bipod on my rifle. But if I've got to do a standing shot or just a, a higher up shot where I've got to shoot over brush, I can, I can use these these quick sticks, quick sticks adapters with this quick clip and it'll work pretty handy. It's a little overkill having two different rests uh, like that. This bipod I can get pretty far out, but if you want a lot of options, why not? There's very little uh, weight uh, penalty for carrying that around. So the other things that I carry in this big pocket are all the stuff that I just reach in and kind of set up before I go on the hunt, all right? So I have a phone case for either if you're using a phone scope, I happened to, this last time I happened to be trying that all in, the new device, the magnetic device on my spotter for uh, digiscoping and taking pictures uh, with your iPhone. So either way, your phone scope case, your all in case, I put that in there so I have it, I can, I can swap my phone out and have that in there. Always a set of earplugs particularly ever since everybody started using muzzle brakes on rifles. And if you're guiding guys with muzzle brakes, you have got to be uh, on your ear protection. So I got where I always had this stuff handy. I literally reached into this pocket, throw it on my neck uh, right in the morning, and I've got ear protection. So I've got those two things. I've got an eye patch. I have a video, guys, that covers you know different ways to glass uh, with your spotter with both eyes open. I generally just do it by just training. I can just glass with both eyes open, but if it's a really sunny day, 
it's still hard for me not to squint, so I'll carry an eye patch just to have it. It's almost no weight, so why not have it just for those uh, certain situations? I carry my SteriPin, all right? And then just to touch on that, my water system, I've talked about it before. I have a Nalgene bottle here, and then I have one of these human gear uh, mouths on it. So what I can do is always drink off of this lip so it's not contaminated. And then the actual wider lip of the Nalgene here, I can put dirty contaminated water in via this way, and then I can take my SteriPin and treat it, and that's kind of my system for while I'm out there. I always carry a filtering system, well, in this case, a UV light system, but I always carry that just in case I run out of water, and what I find is that because I'm persistent about always carrying this and using it quite a bit, what I find is that I tend to have a lighter pack because I'm not always carrying extra water. Usually what I do in the morning, I kind of compute my risk on, okay, are we going into an area where I'm gonna have access to streams, access to other water sources, and if, if it's not a real dry area, I'll just pack a little less water, but I always have this SteriPin so I can depend on it in a situation where I need to get some more consumable water while I'm out hunting. I'll actually mention another item when I open up my pack. Sometimes I'll carry just a little extra water bottle just in case, particularly if I'm gonna have to climb. So if I'm gonna have to climb up a ridge or I'm gonna have to climb you know, up an avalanche chute, I just don't know what the water situation is. In my experience, most of my water situations have been when I've climbed up out of a bottom and I've climbed up into the Alpine thinking there was gonna be water along the way and yeah there might be but it's going to be way down in a swell you have to drop back down or that sort of thing to get access to it so those are situations where i'll carry a little extra water and i'll show you some some options uh, on that front but anyways just to finish this off i i always keep a couple uh 55 gallon basically contractor um, garbage bags and those are multi-purpose one I can use them as a safety mechanism they're just as good as those like mylar foil type of blankets that you see in the cheapo Charlie uh, first aid kits so they're good for that you know if you get in a situation where you need to retain warmth you can just cut a hole in the top and stick that over like a poncho the other thing I use them for is if I'm actually packing meat out and I put it inside my pack just to keep things clean. A lot of times I'll throw it in a garbage bag, throw it in there. And if it's just a short, you know, two, three hour hike out and I've got that meat cooled down, there's no problem with doing that. So I always carry a couple, couple garbage bags. In here, I just kind of have some more like personal items. I carry Dermatone, essentially sun lotion. It's a hefty sun lotion. Uh, you know, people from New Zealand, Australia call it zinc, uh, but it works really well. I put it, I try to protect my nose and ears, uh, particularly when I'm up at altitude in a bright environment. I carry a pair of really light sunglasses. I carry some fire starter and a lighter. I carry a little flagging tape, and then I carry an extra set of batteries in here for all my devices right so one of the tricks is if you can get all your devices on one size battery that's best um, but in my case I have triple A's and double A's so I just carry uh, extras of extras of those in here and then I carry some ex just accessible kind of first aid stuff I carry some ibuprofen I carry a little moleskin just for on the on the path um, blister blister repair. I carry a couple of these tenacious tape patches just if I need to patch something. Again, the super lightweight uh, and they work really well. Okay, so if, you, if I have to patch one of my dry bags, you know, I've got a hole in rain gear. A lot of this stuff in this bag, guys, is really it's, you don't have to have it on a day hunt, but what I do is it's vi a lot of the stuff that stays in here is really light and it's nice to have on a day hunt and I always want it on a backpack hunt. So what I can do is I can take this little bag and transfer it to my back pack hunting bag, right? My much higher uh, volume bag. And I have all that stuff in there. You don't have to do a bunch of mix and match kind of kind of stuff with that and make sure I have it. So I have it in here, a little overkill for day hunts, but all of this extra stuff added together, like the patching, the flagging, the extra batteries, the ibuprofen, those sort of things. I mean, you're talking like a couple ounce max, okay? So it's nice to have it just out of convenience. I carry a goo in here just for if I just get run down for some reason if I'm having to basically work on an animal way late into the wee hours of the morning, it's nice to just have a caffeinated uh, goo to get a little sugar bump slash caffeine bump. The other thing I typically carry in here for my day pack is I carry some toilet paper, right? Just a little bit. If I'm being really conscientious about weight, what I'll do is I always have like wet wipes 
you know, just kind of these type, type of wet wipes, I'll take a few of them out and I'll put them in a plastic bag and I put them in my kill kit because for a lot of animals, you know, particularly if they're lung shot, they're gonna start putting out blood on their face and it makes for kind of a gory picture. So I like to be able to wipe that off. So I always like to have wet wipes in my kill kit and those can obviously be used for going to the restroom also. So you don't have to carry both but as a matter of convenience, a lot of times in this outside package, I'll just put a few of these wipes in there just so I don't have to dig into my pack if I have to use the, the restroom. So that's another thing that I typically carry on the outside here. All right, so that kind of covers my little uh, Sherman pack or you know, little auxiliary pack on the outside. The other packs that I have on the outside are just this little pouch. It's actually uh, just a little GPS pouch, but I don't use it for that. And there's a couple things that I carry in here. One, just my go-to knife. Uh, and then I carry a sharpener. This this is just a little DMT uh, sharpener. I also use that Kershaw, the round sharpener. Both of them are really handy sharpeners. Uh, that Kershaw uh, sharpener, I'll put it down in the description and I'll put this sharpener down in the description. The thing about this one is if you actually are using a Scandi, a Scandi ground uh, knife, it's nice to have a flat surface, at least in my opinion it is to sharpen off of. This knife isn't Scandi ground, but I did have a Mora uh, in my pack before. I was doing some meat hunts where we were just going through animals real quick, um, and those cheap knives are handy for that. They're easy to sharpen with that Scandi grind, so that's why I have the flat sharpener in here right now. That's kind of remnants of a of a previous trip, but I do like that uh, Kershaw Ultra Tech uh, sharpener that I always talk about too. That's been handy for me over the years. One thing I'll say about those is I actually just ordered a new one because my one got bent. I don't know, I crushed it or something and had that old one really worn out. I didn't really realize it. Now, granted, I probably used that sharpener for like four or five years and dozens and dozens of hunts, so it's not a surprise, but I, d I was surprised how much uh, it was worn down. I had to actually use a lot less pressure uh, when I started sharpening with the new one. So just a thought. The other thing that I carry on my pack in this little pouch, and I think it's really important to have lights outside of your pack that you can grab if it gets dark. You know, we're not always really prepared for the dark. If we get in a situation where we're chasing a wounded animal, that sort of thing, it can all of a sudden get really, really dark on us, all right? We can go into, you know, just a different type of topography with a different type of exposure, and we could have had a ton of moonlight, and now it's pitch black dark. In those situations, it's really a pain in the ass to get into your pack and try to find your headlamp. So make sure you have your headlamp on the outside. I carry one in here, and then I also carry one in my bino harness, a safety one, all right? Right. But the other thing I do on this is I carry my headlamp in here, all right? I also carry an extra set of batteries for my headlamp in this side pouch, all right? One thing I'll mention, go through your season and then the next year when you get your gear out and clean it up and get ready, when you see batteries in there, you know, old double A's from last year, old triple A's from last year, just throw them in a drawer in your house, okay? Those, those batteries, if they're subpar and they've kind of lost uh, some of their charge uh, over the winter, depending on how you store your stuff, keep them in your house where if those batteries have gone bad, there's not a whole lot of risk and it doesn't cause a whole lot of problems. The last thing you want to do is be lugging around replacement uh, batteries in the field and then when you need them, they're dead, okay? So what I do is I go through all my packs, all my gear before the fall season or the spring bear season, and I clear out all those old batteries, throw them in a drawer in my kitchen where they can be used for kid toys and kind of those sort of uh, situations where if they go bad, it's, there's not a lot of risk involved. In this case, you wanna have reliable extra batteries, so just replace them every year uh, when you're packing your stuff up. All right, guys, this is the gun that's from my $1,500 mountain rifle video and I do promise that the second half of that video will be out soon. Uh, I've already taped it all, I just need to edit it. So here's the rifle. Um, the only thing to note on here is I keep the bipod on it. It's a pick rail setup so technically I could have this off. I don't necessarily need to. I don't find it a big pain in the ass. If the gun is strapped to the middle of my pack like that, where it usually is when I'm just moving into different hunting areas and that sort of thing, I don't really worry about it just being strapped on here. It's handy, so I don't take it off. But you can always take it off, stick it in a side pocket, stick it somewhere accessible. If it is annoying you, you're running into stuff in thick brush or any of that, those situations. So there's my rifle. 
pretty easy setup. I like a short barreled rifle because I tend to pack it on my pack a lot. All right, so before I jump into the bulk of the bag, I'm gonna talk about these pouches. On a day pack in particular, I really like side pouches like this. It makes your optics super accessible and your rain gear, right? You can just reach in there and grab them. So a lot of times I'll have optics and rain gear in here. In this case, I actually have an extra little water bottle. We were hiking up ridges, you know, the kind of the situation that I alluded to, we were hiking up ridges, there's tons of water around the area, but once you get up a, ri up a ridge, it's really nice just to have another little half liter of water. The these little bags weigh nothing, um, so I like to have one, but another little half liter of water can, can, can be a you know can be a godsend when you're up there and you don't want to drop back down to filter water so that's what's in there um, so i'll have the water i'll have my optics typically where i can get them as we move around i can pull them out and quickly set up my spotter or tripod binoculars or whatever i like those in the outside and then i like a, i like my rain gear in the outside all right so i'll shove those down in one of these pockets i'll go over some some thoughts on rain gear uh, at the end of this uh, stuff because it's kind of in my side pile here I was going to talk about. But the reason that you don't see optics, a tripod and a spotter on this pack right now is like I said, this is exactly how it was after our last hunt. And what we had done is we knew where some elk were and we made a big play on them uh, during that day. And we went in there in the afternoon and I didn't need to carry the extra weight of the spotter or tripod, okay? I had my chest binoculars. We were gonna be sub seven, 800 yards from them uh, if they showed up in the right spot. They did show up, they didn't show up right in the right spot. Um, but uh, that was uh, that's why I'm not carrying that extra weight. If I'm having to cover a lot of elevation grade, I don't see any reason to carry extra op optics when I'm not looking beyond six, 700 yards in those situations where I know there's game in there, okay? Like I've already spotted them from a long distance away. We're going in there really on an extended stock, right? We're not looking for game. If you're looking for game, even in those sub thousand yard ranges, it's nice to have a good optic, but that's not the situation here. So that's why I don't have them. Generally what I do when I am packing them, which is most of the time to be honest. So I have a slick tripod here and then I have an outdoorsman pan head. What I like to do, particularly in a dusty kind of dirty environment, is I like to take my, my tripod head and I like to adjust it and lay it down where the handle is smooth uh, to my tripod and I like to go down with it in the pouch, okay, like that. And what that does it, is it keeps the dirt off of that tripod head. I've never had an issue with this, this particular tripod head. I've had that outdoorsman head for at least six or seven years. But what I notice is if it gets dirt in it, I've got to kind of blow it off, kind of wipe it off, but it's a little gritty at first, all right? So to avoid that, I just stick it down in here uh, pan head first and then <clears throat> on my uh, spotter generally what I do is I put the large objective end down and that way it's easier for me to reach in and just grab it by the angle okay and the other thing with the angle is I can curve the angle towards the pack Okay, so I can curve the angle towards the pack like this, and to me, this kind of protects it, right? It's better than having it angled out here where it's gonna bang into stuff or that sort of thing, or a straight scope, kind of the same way it hangs out a little bit more. So with an angled scope, you can turn it like that if you have the eyepiece up on the top. I prefer it that way. And then what you see here, guys, is this is the all-in, uh, I think it's all-in, I don't know, but it's it's the, the new competitor phone scope. I've been testing it out. Um, it's just a magnetic, uh, cap here where I can just stick my uh, magnetic uh, phone case on and pop it on. The phone scope has been awesome for me over the years. I've used it a lot. They're great guys, um, but I'm still willing to try other products. And this this all-in device, it's very nice how you can just pop it on there. They call it the mag scope. I, I don't, I, usually I see it out there market as just the all-in company or whatever, but um, really handy guys. Uh, there's a lot of advantages of it over the phone scope. For me personally, there's one thing that kind of bums me out about it because I think it's very in innovative and props to those guys for making it. For me, though, it seems on this ATX scope, what it does is it actually pulls a little eye relief off that just, it doesn't, I can't, 
I can't run the scope all the way in because this eyepiece, it sits a little bit higher. I think for 99% of people, that's not gonna uh, that's not gonna matter. But on my optics, I literally I don't put any eye relief in them if that makes sense, right? And it has to do with just my skull structure. I literally had a guy who did LASIK uh, surgery uh, on me. He told me I had the most Neanderthal type of brow he'd ever seen. He actually had difficulty doing the surgery. So for me, I don't use any eye relief. And so what happens when you put this cap on here? There's just a little extra eye relief. And for me it's not perfect right the perfect eye relief is all the way in so this cap is not flush if you fall into that odd weird case you this all-in deal might not be for you but outside of that it's very 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 handy I like it okay so that covers the optics to cover some of these outside logistics a little more before I jump into the middle of the pack I like to have at least one auto locking strap okay on my pack basically they have a ratcheting type of system here you can't just pull and you can't just grab them like this and pull them loose like you can a normal strap on a backpack you have to grab that ratchet mechanism and pull it off but the thing about it is it captures all your progress as you really hammer down and strap things to your pack because i strap optics rifles and stuff on the pack like I've shown in a lot of videos and just showed you with my gun. I'm very dependent on these these uh, being really reliable, things not catching them and pulling them loose, that sort of thing. So I like to have at least one auto-locking strap. It's really auto-locking buckles on my pack. In this case, I have two. They are a little bit of a pain in the ass, particularly as you get used to them, um, but have at least one so you can make sure and secure items down. In this little top pouch here, all I carry I have an extra set of earplugs. I don't need these. I have an extra lighter and I have a pair of gloves. Okay. So a lot of times if it's a little bit colder weather, I'll also put a beanie in there. And those are just things that, you know, little layers that I know I'm going to be swapping around during the day. Okay. I'll try to keep those, those layers that are always in play. So like rain gear, gloves, beanie, those sort of things. I'll try to keep those on the outside of the pack so I don't have to manipulate my pack constantly to get out what I need to stay warm and feeling good. And on that subject, a lot of times what I do, it'll kind of make this setup look a little ragtag, but having this little, this little pouch or some sort of equivalent like this little pouch, I can actually just put my layers in here and just strap them down. And if, if you just tidy them up, kind of strap it down, then you have access to that layer too. In more extreme volatile conditions like high altitude elk hunting in say like Colorado, where you could have a 70 degree high that day, 75 degree high, and then down to like a you know single digit low. In those cases, you have to carry some extra layers. A lot of times that's when I'll depend on strapping a layer to the outside of my pack like that. Guys, I realized I just glanced over knives real quick and I'm gonna get questions on it. So I'm just gonna dive in real deep real quick just to, just to cover it again. This is a buck one. 13 it's my preference for just my day-to-day -day, uh, hunting knife guys it's really about how it feels in my hand uh, you guys might have your own preference so just try different knives I like this knife I like the shape of the shape of it it does everything for me I you know I can take an elk from beginning to end just with this knife I can skin a bear I can I can basically flesh a bear out with this knife while I'm skinning okay so to me the shape of the knife matters a whole lot but it's gonna vary on what you're doing and how it feels in your hand the buck 113 is one of my favorites you know it may not be yours all right the other thing to just go over killing knife is I almost always have a pocket knife in my in my pocket it's nice to have that it, the reality is in hunting situations it's nice to have a couple knives I mean I have a pocket knife generally because I'm eating like cheese or opening food bags and that sort of things with it I don't really want to get my hunting knife out to do that that's why I carry this but it is nice to have this if I'm skinning a bear what I'll do is I'll do the hide work with one knife and then I'll get in on the meat and I'll do the meat with another knife just to keep basically the hair off of the off of the meat okay just a little bit easier to have uh, some more hygiene if you have a couple knives and then the other thing that I the other knife that I carry so I literally am usually walking around the woods with three knives probably a little overkill but I'm just giving you the reality guys here is I always carry a little Havilon in my chest binocular pouch right the reason is is several times in my life 
I've got into a situation where we were following a wounded animal late at night. We set our packs down. Usually we set our packs down. We, you know, we went over for the last 20 yards of a stock set up, shot at the animal, wounded the animal, ended up in a hurry to try to get another shot before it got dark. And we ended up chasing that animal into the dark. We, fat, we got to him. We were 500, 600, 700 yards, who knows how much elevation gain or negative down on the animal now. So to get back to the packs, one thing that's nice in that situation, if you just happen to have a little knife in your bino harness or even your, your pocket knife that you got clipped in your pocket, you can gut that animal and do the basics that night before you leave the animal, right? So you can do what you need to do there and then hike up to your pack, go back to camp, and then first thing in the morning, come back in and deal with the animal. If you don't have a knife, either in your bino harness or in your pocket, it's a huge pain in the ass because now you've kind of doubled your time in, in the struggle way late at night, right? You gotta go back up to your pack, you've gotta come back to the animal, deal with it, get you know get it in a situation where it can cool down so you've got to gut it or quarter it all of those things whereas if you just had a knife you could do some of that simple prep get it set up where it's going to be fine through the night go back to camp go back to your pack grab your pack go back to camp come back in the morning when you once you've got some rest the animals cooled down properly that sort of thing so having a knife on you all the time either in the bino harness or clipped to your pants is uh, critical in my mind all right so let's open this pack up so all this stuff in the main compartment of my pack guys i keep compartmentalized in ultra light uh dry bags okay so the first one i have here is i always have a down jacket and i keep it in a dry bag Okay, I keep it in a dry bag so it's not wet when I need to use it, all right? It doesn't really matter the weather uh, conditions. I always will have this in there. To me, it's a safety thing. If I have to spend an extra night out, you know, everything gets wet, but this isn't a dry bag, so I have something dry to put on, um, you know, after I've got the water off of me. Just this ultra light, lightweight down jacket can make all the difference. So I always keep that. One thing to note with these is don't keep them compressed. It, I, it doesn't really matter what the manufacturers say. If you compress down, it does lose some of its warmth if you always keep it compressed and that down gets smashed. So usually what I do is when I'm storing this down jacket, I'll kind of just loosely set it in this dry bag and I won't compress the dry bag. Then when I go hunting, what I'll do is I'll shove it in there, compress the dry bag just for space and then put it in my pack. But generally, when I store it, I always make sure and just kind of loosen that down uh, in the dry bag so it's there and ready to go. But then when I'm in the field, I compress it. So it's only compressed when I'm actually out there. All right, guys, so the next pouch I'm going to jump into here is my first aid pouch. But before I do that, I want to give you an overview of how I deal with first aid and emergency gear in the backcountry, okay? And this is going to be based on my experience with several pretty serious situations in the past, all right? In the ideal world, we would be carrying a ton of first aid gear and a ton of safety gear. Everything imaginable for every imaginable situation, but there's a reality here we have to face. One, we don't want to have to carry all that stuff just because it sucks to carry a bunch of extra weight. The other thing to realize, if you're always carrying a bunch of extra gear, it actually puts you at more risk of entering in to a serious situation, right? You're gonna, you're gonna get more tired, you're gonna have to dig through stuff, you're not gonna know where all your equipment is, that sort of thing. You need to know what to carry and for what situation. To me, the critical parts of first aid in almost all wilderness situations are light and backup light, warmth, you know, warmth with layers and fire and communication. In all the touchy situations that I've been in in the wilderness, those were the three key elements, okay? So as you can see, those are really easy to duplicate and there's not a big weight penalty. So on fire, I didn't mention it before, but any ignition source that I have, I also keep a good source of kindling with it too. In this pack here, I have a lighter and a, and a source of uh, kindling. In the top here, I have a lighter and a source of kindling. And then in my bino harness, in case I were to get separated from this pack, I have a ferro rod and some kindling, okay? So I have multiple duplications of a way to start a fire. I already show you that I carried an extra down layer um, with me. If I'm in a really cold situation, I might even have an extra layer that I'm keeping with me too. And I can even use my rain gear layer as an extra warmth layer also, all right? And then on light. Light is critical in these situations. I think people downplay that a lot. You need to have a working light source in emergency situations in the dark in particular, obviously. But most emergency situations in the wilderness, they don't get dealt with in 
immediately, so you're gonna have to deal with the night and dark at some point. So, as I showed you before, I have a good headlamp here. I have backup batteries with it. I also have a small backup headlamp in my bino harness for the same reason I talked about when I talked about fire and warmth, okay? I have that light in there in case I were to get separated from my main pack. And then in this pack here, I have extra batteries for my headlamps in here, all right? So lots of duplication there, guys, but there's really very, very minimal amount of uh, weight penalty, so I'm willing to do that, all right? So that pretty much covers it. We got warmth layers, we got light, and we got communication, right? We have our inReach in this pouch also. So those are the three critical things. The next critical thing, is what I always carry in this pouch, and that's the ability to stop bleeding, okay? So that's that's really, if we think about all the things that can affect us in the wilderness or in these outdoor situations, the stuff that kills us is really about bleeding, all right? And a lack, or a lack of communication and a lack of an ability to get help, get lost, those sort of things. So in here, I keep a cat tourniquet, I keep an Israeli bandage and a bunch of gauze, all right? And I know how to use those items, okay? Those are critical items that I think everybody should know how to use when you're involved in these outdoor activities. The situations that you use this stuff, you're actually gonna save somebody's life. You know, have an extra mole skin or those sort of things, that's not gonna save somebody's life. That's really convenience first aid. If I'm backpack hunting, I'll actually take this additional kit in this dry bag and I'll go, through this real quick. This has a bunch of stuff to me that is not as critical, but I'm willing to carry the weight on a longer trip because inconvenience could matter a whole lot. On a day hunt, inconvenience is just gonna maybe wipe out half of that day's hunt or something like that. On a backpack hunt, it could ruin the whole week's hunt if you have to pack all the way out. So I'm willing to carry some extra stuff. I'll carry some extra batteries for multiple days. You know, if some batteries get destroyed or something, I like to have extra, extra extras, okay? I'll carry kind of a whole, you know, a whole like convenience pouch, okay? So this is gonna have all your standard medication that can help you out. Ibuprofen, Imodium for your stomach, Pepto-Bismol, it's gonna have a bunch of Band-Aids. It's gonna have a, like a Steri strip, so like a closure type of Band-Aid. So if you have a, a wound that's separating, I'll make sure I'll have that. I'll have one of these little splinter out things. It's just a little deal where it's easy to pick splinters out. I also have a way to deal with blisters or chafing in here, you know, just kinda to feel more comfortable. So a lot of times I'll carry some of this Sport Shield uh, stuff. And then for blisters, I'll carry moleskin. And then I'll also carry some Luco tape that I have in here. I always carry zip ties for uh, repair. I always carry some duct tape, just a little mini roll of it here. I carry some foil, really for mainly just cooking fish. Um, so those sort of little things. Carry a little, a little gauze and a little uh, just wrapping bandage. The other thing I carry extra of is I carry some water purifying tablets. These are really good backup and there's really no, no weight penalty. I always keep some extras in this kind of emergency backpacking uh, hunt uh, pouch, but I also keep at least four or five, six tablets in my bino harness, okay? And the idea is that on a longer duration trip, if I had a malfunction with the filter or my steri pin, I can go back to, to using these tablets. And then also, if I just got in a really bad situation away from my pack, even on a day trip, I'll have a couple of these tablets in that bino harness. You can avoid a pretty miserable situation by having a couple of these tablets with you all the time and then a bunch of extras on a backpack hunt. If, you know, if a filter goes bad or a steri pin malfunction, functions on a backpack hunt, it can kick you out of the woods. So uh, if you have those tablets, that'll save you that trip. So those are just some, some extra things that I, I carry in that more of my backpacking first aid. Now on my kill kit, I'll run through this real quick. This is the last pouch that I have in this main main bag. Like I mentioned before, I don't always carry a full kill kit with game bags and that sort of thing because a lot of times I can just hang up meat with a paracord and quickly come back in. If it's past mid-September, game bags are not gonna prevent your meat getting attacked by martens or bears or that sort of thing. And bugs really aren't bad by the time you get there or ladder, particularly at altitude. So I find why carry the game bags I can hang it up, let it cool off, it'll get a nice rind on it, and then I'll be right back in there to get the rest of the meat, throw it in a garbage bag, it's already cool, throw it in my pack and head on out so I won't carry game bags. But if I do carry game bags, I put them in this kill kit, and I don't carry any of the extra packaging or anything that comes with them, I just carry them wrapped up like this, okay? So these are caribou, caribou gear bags, you know, they're, 
There's some of the newer technology type of bags and they're super lightweight, right? Don't carry the basically pillowcase ones that you buy at, uh, at Walmart. They're five times the weight of these and they, they're really not any better or anything else. They're, these are probably actually better. So anyways, I carry enough for the particular animal that I'm going after, all right? If you're, if you're going after mule deer, carry, you know, you can get away with one less game bag than if elk, with if you are, you're going after elk. And then other things I carry in my kill kit, I put a little extra paracord in here, a little tape for marking, and then this is just one thing I always carried when I was guiding. What happens a lot of times when you're taking pictures with animals that were just killed is their jaws want to flop down. It kind of looks, it doesn't look real professional and the pictures really don't do the animal justice if their mouth is, is dropping down. And so I always carry just a little uh, sewing needle here. This is a leather needle and then some thread. And what I would do is I'll go, I pull the bottom lip down here, go into the gum, pull the upper lip uh, of the animal up, go into the gum there, and then I just do a surgeon's knot, right? A really tight surgeon's knot, and then clip off the thread, and then I'll just, then I'll take, I'll take just some some wet baby baby wipes, like I mentioned before, and I'll wipe the animal's face off so there's not, not any blood, not any bubbles, you know, the kind of that nasty that's on their face and uh, makes them look odd in the pictures. You know, we want we want them to look look nice in the photos. Um, if they're lung shot, you'll get a lot of material coming up. You can just wipe that off um, with this uh, with, with these wipes, and then you sew the mouth up, and then it's going to keep the mouth shut, and they look uh, they look a lot better. It makes for great pictures. So that's just another thing I carry in my kill kit. And that's pretty much it. Nothing nothing fancy in there. I don't carry knives in the kill kit. Uh, to me, I want my knives accessible. I don't only use them for for working on game animals. All right, guys. So I just covered my pack as it was actually coming off of that hunt, okay? So there's probably a couple things that you guys notice are missing. So the first thing that's obvious in that pack that's missing is rain gear, okay? And the thing about rain gear is it does have a pretty good amount of weight to it, all right? And I was trying to be very conscious in this pack for that last uh, hunt because we were doing a whole bunch of elevation gain. And I knew there was literally, the weather was calling for zero chances of rain. What I'll say on that is, particularly in high altitude mountains, when a thunderstorm can roll in at any time, even if the chance of rain is 0%, take rain gear with you, at least your top uh, rain gear with you, you know, your jacket, because your rain gear, you can also use it as an extra layer, all right? So it kind of fills in on that whole safety precaution with making sure you can stay warm, all right? So rain gear is nice to have. Now, if it's a day hunt, use your judgment. If there's literally no chance of rain, to me, use your judgment. You don't always have to have it with you, all right? But that's the option for you. This is a Kuyu jacket. I like this jacket, but there's lots of different options. This is actually, I actually have got where I like this type of jacket, particularly if I'm day hunting, it's not a whole lot heavier than the the standard rain gear that you're gonna get that you're gonna get from all the mountain hunting uh, companies in the U.S. But this is from a New Zealand uh, company, and they cut their rain gear long. And I actually like this, particularly if I only have one piece of rain gear with me. I like to have a little bit longer jacket because I can sit on it and my butt doesn't get wet. I mean, literally, these are probably about the same weight, and this one fulfills. Um, my need for keeping my keeping my ass uh, dry and not sitting in, in wet grass. This is a uh, this is a Stony Creek jacket. It's, it's a New Zealand uh, company. I like it. It's a, one of their longer style jackets. So I tend to like that that style of jacket. But everybody has their preference. The other thing I'll mention, guys, if I know I'm going to be glassing a whole lot that day, I'll usually carry one of two things. I'll either carry a little one of these cut. This is just cut from a from a thermo rest. Uh, you know, super ultra lightweight um, sleeping pad, right? You can you can get these things. You can probably find old ones on eBay. I just cut a piece of that off, and that can be my my little pad. weighs nothing, and it's a lot more comfortable to glass off that pad. The other thing I use a lot, but only in situations where I don't have to carry it as far, is I'll carry a crazy creek. You've seen that in other videos. I mentioned that. Those are really handy and they actually support your back pretty well. I can actually stick that right in here and strap it to, to my backpack. But I only use that in situations where I'm not carrying it really far, all right? They're kind of bulky and they do weigh a whole lot more than this pad. So this is generally my go-to pad. If I know I'm gonna, if I don't think I'm gonna be glassing for hours and hours on end, I generally won't take anything. But if I'm going, if I know I'm going in a situation where I might glass five hours that day, it sure is nice uh, to have that pad. It's so nice, I'm actually just gonna 
put it right back on here. All right guys, so let's cover my bino harness real quick. So just a couple uh, things to mention on my bino harness that might be unique. I put my ammo in just a little pouch here on the side of my bino harness, and that's typically what I'll carry uh, on a hunt. And that's what I recommend hunters carry on a hunt. Two, three, four rounds in their magazine, and then another essentially 10, to 10 to 15 rounds in one of these sort of uh, little pouches. And that seems like a whole lot. I've seen a lot of guys in situations where animals got hurt and we were tracking the animal, you had to shoot at it multiple times. I've seen many, many hunters over the years, you know, either hunters that I was guiding or hunters that my guides were guiding that went through, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 rounds over a couple day period chasing down a wounded elk or wounded mule deer. It does happen, guys. So just make sure you have enough rounds. Experienced hunters would be lying if, there's, if they say they've never been in those situations. But when you're in those situations, you can go through a lot of ammo because you're taking every opportunity to shoot that animal again to get it to get uh, the situation under control. So going through a dozen rounds is not unheard of. So that's why I like to have, you know, three or four in the magazine and then another 10, 12 uh, here and you should be good. That's, that's the amount of ammo that I think everybody should have. One caution I will give is don't put your extra ammo on your pack. Have it somewhere on your body, in your pants, on your belt, on your bino harness. Because what happens is guys put their pack down for that last little chunk of a stock and then they unload their gun you know, they've, they've shot two or three times, now they've got an animal wounded and they have to run back to their pack. That's a bad situation and you lose an opportunity to handle everything right there. So make sure you carry your ammo somewhere conveniently. I love this pouch right on my side. I can get to it, pop it open, and get to that extra ammo. The other thing that I do a lot of the time is I always have two magazines for my rifles, okay? And I'll usually have one in the gun when I'm hunting and the other one I'll keep in my jacket. So I don't even have to depend on this uh, pouch um, you can just get to that other magazine and be ready so that's that's one trick I already mentioned I have kindling here and I have a ferro rod I always have that with me on my bino uh, harness I have just a little spuds here um, you know little little microfiber cloth and that I can clean all my optics I can clean the screen of my iPhone any of those sort of things. It's really nice to have that. I have a wind checker. I have an extra set of earplugs. So in the situation that somebody hunting with me or in the situation where I forgot to put my earplugs on, which I'm pretty good about nowadays, but I still keep an extra set of earplugs right here. And then in the front, of my bino harness here just a set of elk calls regardless of what kind of calls you choose to use i like to keep them in these plastic cases they don't stick to each other but i'll give you a suggestion if you find yourself in this situation where you're cow hunting and you're doing late season cow hunts and you're on roads it's just a reality of a lot of those type of hunts you're moving around in a vehicle on a road take a diaphragm call out of here out of your bino harness and stick it up above your visor on your vehicle that way if you jump cows or you see cows already running that you didn't see beforehand outside of the vehicle you can turn your vehicle off and jump out grab that diaphragm instead of struggling to get it out of here you'll never get it out you can grab that diaphragm call that's above your visor throw it in your mouth and as you jump out of the truck just just mew at those cows that are running and a lot of times you'll get them to stop that's a road hunter tip all right but it does work particularly cows that haven't had it done to them a whole lot once cows are used to that they'll actually you know they actually know what's going on all right guys so that covers it i covered every little nitty gritty thing on here i hope you guys found it useful i hope you got some good ideas out of it like i said in the beginning view this stuff as a framework all right i gave you a reason on why i carry this stuff not to be long-winded just so you know why it may be applicable to your hunts it may not be and you might find your own set of trade-offs in terms of weight and gear you want to take so guys if you have any suggestions out there something i didn't cover something that you think is critical Critical that you have in your pack mention it in the comments outside of that guys if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks guys